There's something special about lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. It's not that they're all on the left side of the periodic table, because if it were that, then hydrogen would be included as well. Let's go through a few common characteristics of these. First, they're all metals. Second, obviously, they're all on the left side of the periodic table. That does have something to do with the third thing, which is they all react very aggressively. Not only do they react aggressively, but they react very aggressively with plain old water. Why do they react so crazily with just water? Well, that's what we're aiming to find out today. I'm not gonna keep you waiting, so let's get started. The six metals that I listed earlier are all on the left side of the periodic table, and they all react aggressively with water, which means that they get their own special name. These six metals are called alkali metals. Alkali metals react aggressively with a lot of things, but why is this? First of all, it's because in their outermost shell of electrons, there's only one electron there. This makes it really easy to donate or share this electron with other atoms in a chemical reaction. What makes this even easier is that they are the largest of the atoms. Because they're larger atoms, it means that the nucleus and the outermost shell of electrons are pretty far apart. Since they're not attracting each other with as much force, it's easier to pull that last electron away. This makes it really easy to turn these into plasmas. This is actually true of all elements. The larger the atomic size, the easier it is to turn it into a plasma. This is known as ionization energy. The energy required to pull the electron away from larger atoms is less than with smaller atoms. Therefore, they are more easily ionized and turned into plasma. If you want to learn about plasma, you can check out my video on plasma and about the transitions between states of matter. Since the ionization energy is less, it makes it easier to pull the electrons away, which in turn makes them more reactive. They're also more reactive because the bonds between the atoms in the metal are less strong, and so they're more easily pulled apart and turned into other things. When you turn something into something else, it is a reaction. All these things compile on top of each other and make alkali metals very reactive. And I mean very reactive. I'm not allowed to get my hands on these alkali metals for a reason. They can be pretty explosive. In the process of editing this video though, if I found some royalty-free content of alkali metals exploding, I will put it in here. But why do alkali metals react so strongly with water? Water should put out fires, right? Well, that's actually somewhat true. But the alkali metals react in such a way that it releases hydrogen so that the hydrogen burns. Let's use the reaction with lithium as an example. If you take two molecules of the lithium and two molecules of water, they can turn into something else pretty easily. After the reaction takes place, what's left is two molecules that are one part lithium, one part oxygen, and one part hydrogen. These molecules are very basic and will neutralize just about any acid. But there are two extra hydrogen molecules. They had to go somewhere. Where did they go? The hydrogen molecules actually bonded together and formed H2. Why is this important? Because H2 is very explosive. The reason the Hindenburg blew up was because it was filled with hydrogen. These hydrogen molecules are actually released into the air. But because the reaction took place, the reaction is actually creating heat. The heat is a byproduct of the reaction happening. That heat is actually enough to light the hydrogen molecules on fire. Therefore, they'll explode. This reaction is the same with each of the other alkali metals. They're turned into a very strong base with the alkali metal in it, and they also release hydrogen. The hydrogen is ignited from the heat from the reaction. Some of these reactions are kind of lame, but some of them are very explosive. It really depends on which metal you're using. Why do the reactions create heat? Well, the reaction creates heat because that's what reactions do. Most reactions either create heat or require heat to happen. When you react baking soda and vinegar, for example, that actually requires heat to happen. And so it'll draw heat from the air around it, which makes the surrounding air cold. However, reacting alkali metals releases heat. 
and so that heat is enough to explode the hydrogen. That's all I've got for you about alkali metals, but before you click away just yet, I ask you to stick around for 30 more seconds as I sell myself to you. If you enjoyed today's video or enjoy my other content, please subscribe. If I know that people are enjoying my content, it means that I continue making content because I know people are enjoying it. If you don't enjoy it, that's fine, but please share this video with someone who you think will enjoy it. That way they can have the experience of watching my content. If you subscribed because of this video, comment about it below and I will make sure that I reply to your comment. Also, if you shared it with someone, comment below about that and I'll reply back to you as soon as I can. If you came to this video because someone shared it with you, comment about that and I will reply to you as soon as I can. Lastly, if you have any ideas for videos that I should make, comment about them below, I'll get back to you, and then it's possible that I'll make a video that's basically just for you. That's it for today's video. There will be more videos right here and right here, and you can subscribe up here. Thanks for watching.